Hello and welcome back. Uh, in this exercise we're going to uh, look at means again, but this time it's going to be something different. We're going to look at something called a weighted mean or a weighted average. And this is just a little bit different from a regular uh, arithmetic mean or a regular average uh, that you're probably quite familiar with. If you've watched other of my videos, we've, we've gone through uh, how to calculate these averages. Uh, this one's a little bit different in the sense that we can give a different weight or place different value on different observations. So if I start with, let's start with a, uh, my simple example here. 5 plus 7 plus 10 uh, and 14. So here I have uh, five observations. Uh, we can calculate just the basic arithmetic mean. So the regular average that we've uh, we've looked at before, 5 plus 5 plus 7 plus 10 plus 14. And I have five observations, so we divide that by 5. And if we plug this into our calculator, 5 plus 5 plus 7 plus 10 plus 14 divided by the number of observations, and I have an average of 8.2. Now, so that's no big deal. Now, implicit in this calculation, something that we are doing but sort of overlooking, is the fact that I am giving equal weight to each of my observations. So this has a weight of 1. This 5 also has a weight of 1. This 7 is, has a weight of 1. The 10 has a weight of 1. And the 14 has a weight of 1. So in this calculation, each of those observations is given the same weight. Notice that my denominator is equal to the sum of the weights. So this is 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That equals 5. Now, if I wanted to give uh, more importance to any one of the observations, well, I can just change its weight. So let's say that I want to give more importance to this 10. So I want to give the 10 for whatever reason. Oops, where'd my eraser go? I want to give this 10 twice as much importance. So I'm going to give it a weight of 2. So now, my denominator is no longer 5. My denominator is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm counting this one twice. It has twice the weight. And 6. So now I divide this by 6. And if I get my calculator, so now this is 5 plus 5 plus 7. Plus now I'm giving 2 times the weight. So 2 times 10 to that 10 plus 14. I divide it not by 5, but I divide it by 6. Now I have a new mean of 8.5. So we can give different weights to any number of different observations, and that's what we call a weighted mean. Now, let me just clear some space. We'll look at the, f the, the formal calculation, uh, or the formula. For the means that we've done before, as you may recall, we took the sum of each of those observations across our whole sample. So each of the individual observations, we added all of them up, and that was the numerator in our calculation. But now we're going to weigh each of those. So I'm going to put W in here. So this W is the individual weight of each of my observations in that data set. Now, we don't divide by the sample size anymore. Now we divide by the sum of all of those weights. So now this is going to be the sum of those individual weights. I is uh, uh, 1 through n. So we add up all of the weights. And this gives us our weighted mean. Hey, again, it looks a little bit tedious, um, but the calculations are nothing too complex. They're a little bit, uh, a little bit tedious, a little bit tricky because it's easy to make very silly mistakes in your calculations. Um, but it's nothing more than adding and multiplying um, and dividing. But lots of room for mistakes. 
So let's go through an exercise and we'll go through it slowly um, because I don't want to make any mistakes and have to redo this video. Uh, again, you don't know how many times I've already had to remake this video. <laughs> so here's an example uh, that I've taken actually from my classroom. It's a very common question that I get from my students uh, to, to calculate an interim grade. So at some point in the semester, we've completed only some portion of all of the course requirements, and a student would like to know, Peter, where am I standing? What is my current grade? So in this exercise, here I've actually taken, this is a, a, I've copied and pasted this from one of my course outlines, where it shows, you've probably seen this on any course that you've taken, it shows how much each of those course components are worth. The assignments, 10%, the quizzes. So here I have three quizzes, and all together, they're worth 20%. So what that means is that each individual quiz, in my case, is 20 divided by 3. Each individual quiz is 6.67. So here I'll actually write this down just so I can keep track. This is actually 6.7 each. The midterms, there's two midterms total 40% is their value, so that's 20% each. And then the final exam is 30. Before writing the exam, the student wishes to calculate their interim grade. Now, I always make a point of giving back assignments and things, so here my student has all of their grades on each of these course components. Now with this information and with this beautiful formula here, we can calculate an interim grade. What we have here, these are the weights that are applied to each of these values. So let's go ahead and, and we'll, we'll write out this formula uh, in, in its long form with the numbers and it might make a, a little bit more sense. So let's start uh, blue. So here this is a weighted mean, so I'll put subscript W. We're working with a weighted average. And let's start at the at the top. So the assignment is worth 10%, and we have a grade of 62. The quizzes, so these are 6.67 each, and I have a grade of 53 on that one. 6.67, a grade of 65 on that one. Oops, 6.67, and I have a grade of 78 on that one. And now the midterm, so these are 20 each, 67, and 20 times 79. Okay, so here's all of my grades, each one weighted by the appropriate weight taken off the course outline, and I divide it by I divide it by here the sum of the weights. So if I add all of these up, while well, I'm looking at everything in the course so far except the final exam. So I'm looking at all of this here. So that's 70% of the course. The final exam is 30%. The sum of my weights, 40 plus 20 plus 10. So here this is 70% of the course uh, that I've completed. So now let's uh, get the get out our calculator and let's begin uh, punching in the numbers again. Be very careful when you're when you're entering this in your calculator. Lots of room for mistakes. So this is ten. Oh, I already made a mistake. It's not plus. It's times. Ten times sixty-two plus six point six seven times fifty-three plus six point six seven times 65 plus 6.67 times, what's happened? Why do I have brackets in there? My goodness, I think I've made a mistake. Let's start over. 10 times 62 plus 6.67 times 53 plus 6.67, 65, times 78 plus 20 times 67 plus 20 
times 79. Okay, phew, 48, 47.32, 48, 47.32 divided by 70, and so this gives me an interim grade or a weighted average of 48, 47.32 divided by 70. Whoa, press something wrong. 48, 47.32 divided by 70 equals, there we go, 69.25%. 69.25. So there's an interim grade. Given that we've completed 70% of the course, we can calculate a weighted average using the weights that are given and the marks on all of the assignments and exams that I have had returned, and my interim grade is 69.25%. Good. Now, another very common question as we approach uh, the exam, the final exam, is, hey, Peter, Okay, I'm at 69.25%. What grade do I need to receive on the final exam uh, if I want to receive a final grade of 80%? So here in my university, 80%, this is an A-. minus. So given that I'm at 69.25, what grade must I receive to receive that 80%? Well, we can solve for that fairly easily, actually. Given the work that I've done, I'm going to change color, but I'm, I'm going to reuse a lot of the calculations uh, that we have already done here. Let me just write in my answer here, 69.25. So let's, uh, let's change this to pink. So now what I want to do is I want this weighted average, this weighted average for the full course so for everything, so I'm going to add uh, the weight of the final exam times some mark on that final exam. And now the sum of the weight after the final exam, well, we will have completed 100% of the course. So all I've done here is I've added on this unknown this unknown grade that has a weight of 30%, now the denominator after the exam is done will be 100%. So if I add that to this calculation here, this is now divided by 100, and here we're just adding on this 30x uh, and I want to receive a grade of 80%. So now we just solve this for x. So if I rearrange this a little bit, I'll have 4847.32 equals, so if I bring this 100 over, this will be uh, 8,000. Oops, I missed an important piece of information here. 4842. Uh, plus 30x equals 8,000. 30x equals, so 8,000, I'm going to bring that 4847 to the other side. So 8,000 minus 4847.32 3152.68, so x equals, and now if I solve for x, where is my calculator? 3152.68 divided by 30. I need, oh my goodness, I need 100 and 5% on the final exam. So to this student, I say, I'm sorry, 
it looks like you're not going to get 80% in this course because I don't do bonus marks on the final exam. A mark of 105% is just not going to happen. So there you have it. This is uh, how we can calculate weighted averages. Uh, and here's a, an example. I'm going to give this video to all of my classes so that all of my students can watch this video uh, and they will never have to ask me again how to calculate a weighted average. I'm just kidding. You can all ask me anytime you want. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.